Hi, let's take a look at New Window 11 VST multi-panel plugin options when using an NHK 22.2 channel-based speaker configuration and Dolby Atmos 7.1.4 format. In this example, I'll be using a Yamaha AIC 128D cards with a total of 24 outputs, 22 speakers, plus two subwoofer. Now I've created a few workspaces for this project, starting with a Baronalyzer Open, it's a plugin made by Noisemakers, which are inserted on the NHK 22.2 output bus, main bus, post faders, and this Baronalyzer Studio plugin will convert my 22.2, 22 speakers plus two subs configuration into Baronal stereo audio. Now if we look at the settings here, I have it set up as inputs, based on my configuration in your window, and I will use the default settings for this plugin. Now, if I open a different workspace with my VST panel open, we have now an extended display available with the height, the Z functions, which can be turned on and off here. And we also have elevation patterns available in here, which will automatically display when selected to the display, the rear view below. Now I can use the VST multi-panel to record automations and move sound anywhere within the 3D space. As I play the different audio files, you will notice speaker activities on the Baronalyzer Studio plugin based on the position of the sound within the 3D space. So let's lock the panel, switch this to visibility and play a few files, starting with a mono file, some drums, and I can start recording automation at any times change different patterns, which I can, of course, move. It's kind of a different file, this mono file. Let's play a different file here. Let's go find some percussions, solo, stereo file, and move the sound around. Let's find a different files. What are the guitars? <laughs> Finally, uh, let's do a quad sound. Now let's take a look at the Dolby Atmos project. In this example, I have a 7.1.4 speaker configuration set up in the control room. That's seven surround speakers, one sub, and four ceiling speakers or top speakers. Now I've created a few workspaces to help me recall different plugins within the project. Now in this project, I'm using the VST Dolby Atmos renderer set to 7.1.4 and inserted post faders on the 7.1.4 output bus, main bus. I am also using the Banalizer Studio plugin, which is inserted directly below the VST Dolby Atmos renderer here. Now, because Dolby Atmos combined a channel base 7.1.2, also called a 9.1 bed, which are the 10 channels you see in here, and object based channels, which are the little blue circles that you see here, the functionality of the VST multi panel changes based on the selected channel. So, if I open a bed channel VST multi panel, you can see you have the same functionality that you had with the NHK 22.2 configurations with a mode selection here. And you can see that the selection here is set to bed mode. We have a bed mode and we have an object mode. Now, if we open the VST multipatter on an object channels, now you can see that the VST multipatter is set to object mode patched to the renderer with an added object zone here. Now the object zone section determines which speakers are active for the object channels 
And if you look at the tab view section of the panels, the little blue squares will show which speakers are activated based on the zone selections. For example, this is set to seven zones. We can see all seven speakers being active. So now if I play, you could hear the speakers. You could see flashing all the way around us here. Now if I change the zone, let's just do a five zone, you can see now that the two rare speakers are disabled. And if you look at the banalizer, you can see that those two rare speakers here are no longer flashing, meaning they're off at this point here. So we do another one here, let's just do a three zone. On three zone we have the center channels on and the two rare speakers. And you can see the banalizer here, you can see that only the object is only playing on the center channels and the two rare speakers. Now let's just reset this to seven zone. Now if we look at the diversion section of the panel, we now have a speaker snap options, which will lock the sound of the object channel to the nearest speakers. So if I disengage the read automation on this object channel and place the sound object in between these two left surround speakers, and then play the selected track, and we look at the banalizer, we can see the sound is being projected from the two left surround speakers. Now if we engage the snap, speaker snap function here, the speaker snap function will lock the sound to the closest speakers from the object position, right here. So these speakers there. And as you can see on the banalizers, only that left surround speakers is flashing. If I disengage the speaker snap function and look at the panelizer, we see both speakers again playing back. Finally, we have an object size option which will expand the projection of the sound in a room. So if I play this file again and I increase the object size you're going to see an expansion of the sound, as you can see, symbolized by this circle here. So you can see it on the VST multipanners. You can also see it on the VST Dolby Atmos renderer here within the objects view space here. And you can also see that more and more speakers are active as I increase the size of the object. Now, if I decrease the size of the object, as you can see, the circle is getting smaller and we only see a few speakers active at this point. And solo this little file and play a little bit with the object size. Get really big in this sound. Now, if you look at the object view, some of the dots are bigger than others. That symbolizes the height. So some of those large dots means that it's really high on top ceiling speakers are active. 